We're by the new Mishnah, new parak on 20b. If someone is sleeping under a bed, uh, someone sleeps under sukkah, which we already had this case, we, met, we brought this up a while back. If someone's sleeping under the bed of a sukkah, so he's, there's a bed in a sukkah, I'm sleeping under the bed. Um, the halakh is that, according to the Tanakhama, he did not feel the obligation because right now he's not, he's not eating or sleeping under a sukkah, he's eating or sleeping under a bed. Amar Vivida, Hainu, we are, um, it is a custom, it is permitted. Um, because back when we were young, we used to sleep under the beds, and the rabbis didn't tell us anything. And Rashi explains that the reason is, is that it's a temporary dwelling, and a temporary dwelling does not come and overrule a permanent dwelling. So even though a sukkah is not supposed to be permanent, However, it's going to be permanent, way more per- permanent than a bed. Therefore, um, the, uh, therefore, you could one contributor Huda is allowed to sleep under a bed. Um, There's a story with Tevi, the the, the, the servant of Rabbi Gamliel. So that he was sleeping under a bed. And he and Sarmilio turned to the rabbi and said, "Look at my Tevi, my Eved. If you look at Tevi, my 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 slave, although he's a Kenani, still he's a Torah scholar and he knows two things. He knows that Avadim are putter from the Sukkah. They are um, slaves. Do not have to sleep in the Sukkah. Therefore, he's sleeping under the bed." Now, according to the story, we could learn out two things. Lefi darkenu, and according to this, now darkenu was we're going to explain. We're going to see later on in the Gemara why exactly that means. Why is it the funny lashon? And according to this way, uh, we learn two things. We learn that one that sleeps under the the, the bed of the sukkah is not fulfills obligation like the Tanakama, because the evet who is not obligated in the sukkah. And Rabbi Gino is pointing out how smart he is. He knows that he, number one, he knows that he's not obligated in the midst of sukkah. Therefore, he's sleeping under a bed in a sukkah because if one sleeps under a bed in a sukkah, he's not, he's not, um, he's not, he did not fulfill his obligation. But since he's, but he knows he's an evet, so he, so he knows he's a slave, therefore he doesn't have to do it. The point of the story is that, is, is like the Tanakhama. The one sleeps under the bed, and one sleeps under a bed in a sukkah, he's not going to fulfill his obligation. So that's that's Do you know why sleeping under the bed was so common? So we, why they did it? Why did people sleep? Yeah. So it looks like because it's the Canaan, and I don't think Rashi explains why, but it looked like they there was not enough room, so they let the older people, the rabbis, sleep on top, and they would sleep on the bottom of the sofa, under, under the bed. bed. Is it under, under the bed, or is it under the canopy? No, under the bed, physically under the bed, under the under the frame, under the frame, and the boards of the bed. The frames must be. So it's high. Well, we can talk about it in a minute. But yeah, it must have been high enough to to hold a, a body, the, the the height of a the thickness of a body. Okay, but now that you mention how high it is, the Gemara asks, "Am I like Vahalika Sarah?" But there's no, it's not even ten fachim. So it's not ten fachim high. So if it's not from ten fachim high, then what's the problem? Of course, it's not a problem because it's not its own. It's not its own entity. Anything less than ten fachim, we understand. It's not usually not going to create. It's not, we don't look at it as if it's its own entity because it's still part of the. Um, it's still. Uh, it's still part of the. Um, it's 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 not its own entity. It's not a kosher sukkah. A so sukkah needs at least ten walls. Therefore, if if, the, if there's no ten walls to the to, to the to, to the bed, it's not its own entity. Therefore, it shouldn't be a problem. So Targum Shmuel b'mita asara. So Shmuel answered. We're talking about a bed that was ten fachim high. So yeah, no. Happens to me that this bed was really high, it was 10 fachim high. And therefore, it's an entity, therefore, you can't sleep underneath it. Then, on Hassam, um, we learned, Echad Chor Shacharu Mayim. Now, this is an halachis of Ayois, the, the, the halachis of, uh, of Tuma, the halachis of impurity, purity of impurity that that um, that takes place when you have a body in uh, a body, when you have a body in an enclosed place, the impurity fills up the whole, the whole room. Now, Echad Chor Shacharu Mayim. So whether it's a hole that was created as water forced its way through, or it, the point is that it wasn't a man-made. It was that there was a there was shratzim, that the insects 
um, bore a hole. Or the salty earth ate at ate and created a hole. Or a gap in the stones. Or there's a bap in games. When you're when you're piling up rocks and you're build, you're building a mound of rocks, as you're placing it, it ends up being a large hole, a big cavity, because how you place the stones or wood. You place stone. You're placing. You're stacking wood. At one point, you leave open an area. As you're building up, all of these things, if there's a dead body in the cavity, whether it's a hole made by insects or as you're building a a, um, um, a pile of wood, then there is if there's there if, if there's a gap within the beams or a, wherever it is, if there's a gap or if there's a hole, as long as if there's a size of it, because um, so therefore if uh, if there's if there's a a uh, there's a hole, it's gonna work. However, Abihuda argues and says that if it wasn't made with the intention for an oil, it's not going to work. Therefore, if, I have a, if, I'm, if I'm just piling stones, I happen, I don't pile correctly, and I left open one open area, that's not called an oil because, it, and it's more than a tefah high, that's not going to work. The, the, the impurity is not going to spread in there if there's a kazais of a non of, of, of dead body. Like a trundle bed. What do you mean, John? Oh, you mean people sleeping underneath like a trundle bed? Uh, yeah, but but again, yeah, 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 but but under a trundle bed, people don't sleep under a trundle bed, right? You pull it out, right? This is the the sleeping was more like utilizing a bunk bed, but the bunk bed was the actual floor, as opposed to its own bed. Um, now it happens to be that a bunk bed would also. I wonder what happened to be with a bunk bed. We'll see. I'm sure, we'll see. Um, so a beautiful hold. You have to have the pure intention. To create an oil, that's a lot. To create a hole that will, if you have a dead body that will spread out the impurity, you have to be creating that hole for intention of actually creating a cover. Now, my time is Rabbi Huda. What's the reason for Rabbi Huda that you need an you need intention? So let's turn to the top of twenty one a. Yalof oil oil me me mishkan. We write we learn it from the mishkan that siv hacha. It says by Tuma. This is the laws of a person. If someone dies in an oil, the then in the it spreads. The Thomas spreads all over. Except how some writes over there. And it also says, and they spread the oil over the mishkan. Just like by the case of the mishkan, when they created the covering for the mishkan, that was made by a by intentionally by humans for as a roof. Um, here too, it has to be made by a person. So the point is, re one of the reasons that 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 Rabbi Yehuda holds that w that the um, Rabbi Yehuda holds that one is a is allowed to sleep under a bed as opposed to the Tanakama. because according to Rabbi Yehuda, to create an oil has to be intentional. No one created the bottom of a bed intentionally to sleep underneath. You don't you usually don't sleep under the bed. Therefore, it's an unintentional oil. Therefore, it's not going to be its own. A covering for the laws of Sukkot. <clears throat> what were the rabbis say? Because Rabbi Yehuda just brought a proof. He brought a, he got a um, he, he brought a proof from the Torah that one is one has to create a covering with intention. So why the, 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 the rabbis the Tanakhama say that if one sleeps under the bed, he's not fulfilling his obligation? The answer is because they hold Rabban Oyehol Riba. They hold that there are many Oyeholes by the case of. Uh, it says the word oil, which means covering, it says the word oil many times about the case of impurity. Why does it say it so many times? To teach us that any oil, whether it's intentional, whether it's not, is called an oil. Therefore, by the bed, if I sleep under a bed and it's 10 fathom high, it's enough, even though it was unintentional, it's not intended, it wasn't created for the purpose of sleeping underneath it. Well, not, usually we don't sleep under a bed. But still, um, it said it, the deterioration writes it so many times, multiple times, to teach you. It's not a, it's, it, to teach us that one could create an oil unintentionally. There could be an unintentional oil. Okay, the sub Rabbi Huda call oil she'ena biadam ain't ain't oil. And Rabbi Huda really holds that if one creates a oil without any intention, that it's not called a oil. Raminu will ask your contradiction. Chatzeros hayu binyones biushalayim al gav hasala. That we're going to get into a very complicated scenario. Of how they used to go ahead and carry 
the how they used to so it's just a preface that the part when they drew the water for the paraduma they had to draw it in with with um with uh with um with children they tried to draw it in the most pure manner with no questions of whether the person drawing it ever was a tummy a tummy or not so what they did was is that we're going to see in a minute uh well, let's go through what what we're going to do so how you been they used to build houses on top in Yishlaim on top of bedrock. Now it was very, very it was bedrock, so we assume there's no kvarim, there's no um, there's no one buried underneath wherever they're building this house. So number one, the house that this house is going to be impure from day one because we could assume there's no dead bodies underneath. And if there was, and then they would build the houses on arches. So there's more, just in case there is a, um, uh, uh, there's someone buried deep down, way, way, way deep down, there would be a, they'll build a house on arches, therefore there'll be more than a tepa between the house and the and the bedrock. Therefore, if there would be a problem of, of a dead body deep down, it would spread out under the arch and not go straight into the house. That's Allah of oil, right? That, yeah? So it had to be No. So the lachas of oil are that if there's a dead body in a contained area, if that contained area is higher than a tepah, then the, the tuma does not go straight up to, to heavens. Rather, it disperses among the open area. So they would build houses on the arches in order that if there was a dead body deep down, as it's traveling up, it would hit the arch. The arch is more than a tepah and spread out under the house, but it would not make the house impure. Just one tepah. Yeah, all you need is one tepah. Now, so therefore, our this house is pretty much definitely going to be protected from a Tumas Mace. Uh, and they would bring women who are pregnant. And they would give birth in the house. And the children would be brought up for one for the purpose of the para aduma. Now, in order to draw the water. Now, when they became of age, or whenever they needed it, and they were old enough to understand usually when it's before before seven or eight they would make they wouldn't go beyond seven or eight maybe shvarm they would bring oxen and on top of the ox would be boards and the children will be placed on top of the boards the shall even be dehem and then they would have so just say that the board the 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 board was used to use to over even though now if they would be walking and they would pass over, now as they're wa- as they're traveling from this protected house to where they're supposed to draw the water for the para aduma, <coughs> they the, the cow itself technically should be a good. Um, if they would pass over a burial site, the cow itself should be able to block it because the cow is more than a tefa up from the ground. But then we would put the board on top of that in order to widen that area in case the child puts out his hand. There would be a board wider than the cow, blocking him from the impurity, potential impurity coming up from the ground. And then, and they would put a, um, a, earth, uh, um, a stone uh, um, vessel in his hand, which is not Mechabal Tumah. They would come to, to the well, the Shiluach spring. The Yardu and they would, the child would go into the water. And he would Go into the water, fill it up, and go back and sit on the board, which is the top of the ox. Now, Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, Rabbi Yaisi does say he didn't have to go into the water to fill it up. Rather, they would make him stay in place, and he would he would draw it up with a um, a chain. So it's a machlekes whether one has to go into the actual water and scoop up the water with the cup for the parad for the water of the paraduma, or you're able to sort of like uh, use a chain and draw it up like a well. Now, Betana Rabbi Huda, that they did not bring boards on top, but going back, Rabbi Huda himself holds that they didn't put the children on boards on top of the ox, and rather they just placed the children on top of the ox. And that would be enough to block out any potential impurity as they walk over it. Now, our problem is, according to Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Huda till now is telling us that one has to have an intention to create an oil. One has to have intention to create an oil in order to block and disperse all the impurity. 
Vashvarim, the oil chain also be the Adam who, but an ox is not created by a human. So there is no way for us to ever create an ox with the intention for it to be a block, to be an oil. So if that, so therefore, how could it be that he didn't put on boards? If you have Yudim himself hold, that you have to have intention to create an oil, an ox was not created by humans. So there's zero, there's no way to have any intention. And that's our question on Rav Yehuda. We said all this to build up to that one question, because again, Rav Yehuda holds that one could sleep under the bed. His reason is that because when one creates a bed, you have no intention to create a covering. Over here we see that the ox is a good enough covering to block any impurity that's, that's emitting from a dead body in the, um, from the death. But an ox can't be used intentionally, it can't be created intentionally for an oil. We don't, you know, we don't, if you could create it in a lab, that'd be one thing, but we don't. The Katani Rabbi Huda, Amrullah Yahim Mibin Dalsis, El Shvar. Rabbi Huda holds you, but you don't have to bring boards. And we asked the, 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 the ox was enough. Shkasa Rabbi Dimi, Amrullah Lazar, Maidi Rabbi Huda, Kimali Egr. That Rabbi Huda does hold that when you have an extended Usually, an oil is an is a tefachai. So this would be the ground. This would be the covering. Any dead body within this cavity, within this covering, it's not going to go straight up. It's going to disperse over the covering. Now, what, when Rabbi Huda said that one has to do it intentionally, that's when it's exactly a tefach. But as Rashi explains, an egroik was larger, higher than a tefach. So anything higher than this new measurement, which is large, which is Thicker than a tefach, let's put it in the tefach is usually that, so let's put it up to that. Anything bigger than this, if there's a height bigger than this with a covering, in such a case, Rabbi Huda would agree that it could work unintentionally. In Tana Mahaki, Umayd Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda admits an oil could be created unintentionally, Bishkafim Ubinikike Haslaim. That happens was if you have a huge boulder that roll, rolls down a, a, a mountain, let's say, and crashes into the mountainside, and that creates a gaping hole on the mountainside, that's going to be more than an egg rape, and that was made unintentionally. The rock came down by itself during some type of um, avalanche or whatever, or, or, or rock slide, whatever it is. But that was made unintentionally, and Rabbi Huda holds that such a cavity will be Mikabal Tuma. Well, such a cavity, if I, there's a dead body in it, will fill up the entire cavity. But again, that's unintentional. So therefore, we see from here, if it's larger than a certain size of it, if it's much, if it's larger than a tefah, then if it's a tefah, then Rabbi Huda holds that has to be made intentionally. If it's an egg which is a larger measurement than a tefah, then Rabbi Huda agree, uh, admits to the to everyone else that it doesn't have to be made. Um, it does not have to be. It does not have to be um, made intentionally. Now we have a question: Is that if it's really true that it has to be an egg rape, and if it's an egg rape, which is this larger type of tefah, then Rabbi Huda will hold that it doesn't have to be. Then Rabbi Huda will admit that it doesn't have, does not have to be made. Uh, it does not have to be made intentionally. By Deloy, by Dallas, the H by Kamei Groifim, the Katan Rabbi Huda, Amar Loyim Yivin Dallas is Elish Shvar. Now our problem is is that um, it seems Rabbi Huda seems to be saying by the case of the cow and the boards. Now this board is going to be um, this board is going to be more than an egg rife more than a, more than this tefach. It's gonna be an egg rife off the ground. That's pretty high up off an off an ox. And it seems to Rabbi Huda said you can't bring the boards. You only could use an ox. So it seems to be saying that the boards are not gonna work whether you, even if you wanted it to work. And that's an egg. That's that's very high off the ground. Amarabaya the hitzachu lavia dal says no. Just means say you don't have to bring the, the the doors. You could if you want to bring the boards and put them top of the ox. It's not gonna make it any worse. But you don't have to because the cow itself is hot. The, the ox itself is high enough off the ground. Now, Rava Amar. So Amar, so that's Abai's answer for Yehuda. Rava Amar, Lo Yehu Mivi and Dalso is called Iker Shifnei Shedaita Shaltina Gasa Alav. Shemiti Roisha Yachad Mi Avavi Tame. The reason why I didn't put according to Abaya, the according to Rava, the reason they didn't bring boards is just a practicality because if the end of the if you know riding on the board will give sort of give a confidence to the child that he's secure because it's flat, it's not wobbly, it's wide, so he's going to start moving around, and then he might even go off. He might put his hands off the board. It's not going to be. He's not going to be contained within, under within the board because of his confidence of riding on a board. Well, if he's just riding on an ox, it's not as a. It's a bit of a worrisome ride, and he's going to be a little nervous. Therefore, he's just going to stay still and not move around. So that's a practical reason. So we turn to the top of the Kabbalah. 
the church at the top of up of up out of the face, the cave at the home, that the child were afraid that the child would get confident, put his head put his hands over and um and end up um getting himself impure because they will pass over a cave as they're walking as the child is on the board which is on the cow and the cow is walking he's, the child's gonna get confident on the board stick it his stick out his hand over the board and unfortunately there'll be a maybe a uh, a, a, a burial site right there and the burial site has a tumble going up to the heavens and he's gonna get his hands impure now Tani Kavasi Rabbi Yehuda we bring a brisa like Rabbi Yehuda they we don't bring the boars because we're afraid that the child is going to be overly confident as they and enjoy the ride on top of the board and start moving around and stick out its hand and then might be tummy because of a uh, of of its of a burial site. So rather, what did they bring? They brought the ox, the an Egyptian ox, or that their stomach was re- the, the stomach was really wide. But station like Abayan, then the children would again the wider the better. In case he moves it around, there's less of a chance of it going outside the area of the cow and becoming impure. Like Tanaki station like Abayan, and the children would sit on top, the Kai Station Evan be Dehan, and there would be uh, a cup of stone, a Yuli Shiluach, when they went to the Shuach, which was the well. Um, a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen it. The shluach is it's still there. I mean, the place is still there where it used to fill up by near the near near the kaisel. Yordu umlaim va'alav yeshul hen algabein. They would go down, fill it up, go back onto the ox, and take the journey back home, or take the journey wherever they have to bring the water. Aren't they talking about the Egyptian oxes where the belly is actually wider than the? Could be. Wider than the. Egyptian. I never saw an Egyptian ox. I don't know. I could Google it. <laughs> I just said the Egyptian ox has a wider stomach. It could be like you have a picture of the ox that it goes. Out. Yeah, yeah, could be. Actually, the general axis is pretty wide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, now, um, a lot of you were thinking, though, and this is a tef- this is a, this is a question that a lot of you think about. If Rabbi Huda holds that, ha- Rabbi Huda in our mission says, one could sleep under the bed, it's not a problem. We said Rabbi Huda holds that because uh, it has to be in uh, uh, oil. A covering has to be intentional. So it has to be an intentional covering in order to override the sukkah that you're sleeping in. Then we did admit in the end that Rabbi Huda has um, he'll hold that's only when it's a tefah high. But if it's way higher, if it's, if it's a significantly higher than a tefah, then even unintentionally you create an oil. Now a bed is going to be usually higher than a tefah, especially if there's a human underneath it. So therefore we have a bed, which is which is significantly higher than a tefah. So therefore even such a bed, even though it's not intentionally made for an oil, it should be an oil, as we saw by the case of Tumma. That when something is made unintentionally, if it's the space is higher, which is the size of an egg right, with it, which is a larger sized tefa, then even if it's made unintentionally, it's an oil. So therefore, by the bed, this is all very nice, but it's not going to help us. Because by the bed, it's higher than an egg right. We could assume it's higher than an egg right, and it was made unintentionally, but who cares? That would, that would be good enough for tum- that would be in, good enough as a covering to spread out um, impurity of a dead body, so therefore why could one sleep underneath it? So that's the question we're about to ask. So, Baharimita, do yesh by kama a greifim, but a bed has many a greifim, it's quite high, but tenan is higher than a tefak, tenan rabbi huda, a minogin, hainu shainu yeshim taksu, but there's a kainim. So we said it could sleep underneath, but a bed un, un, was an unintentional oil. The answer is, shani mita, hayu vulagaba asuya. That a mita is not. It's it's a little, it's even worse off than an unintentional um, ceiling because when I'm when they're riding on the cow when they took it they meant to be used to block out as a covering of any impurity as they're walking by. When it comes to the bed, the bed was intended. Um, a bed is in, and, and truth is that the cow has an intention altogether, right? When it's created, but a bed when I'm creating the bed, I don't mean I don't mean forever to be a covering. I just mean it for someone to sleep on top. I never had any intention of it to be an actual oil underneath. Therefore, it's worse off, it's worse off, because it's not only an unintentional oil. It's intentionally not an oil. It's intentionally not a covering. A bed is intentionally made for someone to sleep on top, not underneath. Therefore, if someone goes underneath, even if it's this higher measurement of an egg right, still, it's not going to be, if there's a dead bed, if there'd be a dead body underneath, it wouldn't work as an oil. And therefore, someone sleeps underneath, he is 
he fulfills the obligation of the sukkah, and that covering of the bed does not override the sukkah on top. Come on, that we ask. Shvar nami legaben asuyom. That's what I, 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 was, I made a mistake by saying. But uh, an ox also was never created. No one really, uh, an ox, as we understand it, is used for to, to pull something or to sit on top, not to walk around as a protection for the dead bodies underneath. That they that they they protect the shepherds from the sun. The sun the shepherds will put their head under the, when it's sunny. And then they protect from the rain. Um, so let's finish, let's finish off quickly. You know what? We're gonna have to stop here. Five minutes. Well, okay, we're in the middle of something. We'll pick up tomorrow. We'll do a bit of a review and. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow.